welcome back to the Cracking Bang YouTube channel. Today we're solving 3243, shortest distance after road addition queries one. You were given an integer array n and a 2D integer array queries. There are n cities numbered from zero to n minus one. Initially, there is a unidirectional road from city i to city i plus one for all uh, i less than or equal to zero while less than, uh, less than n minus one. Queries of i equals ui of vi represents an addition of a new unidirectional road from city ui to city vi. After each query, you need to find the length of the shortest path from city zero to city n minus one. Return an answer, array answer where for each i in the range zero to queries dot length minus one, answer of i is the length of the shortest path from city zero to city n minus one after processing the first i plus one of queries. Oh my god, why do they make you read all of this crap? Jesus Christ, can you come up with a more concise, like, question, man? These, these people are insane. Anyway, after getting through that uh, reading comprehension thing, basically what we want to do is we're given an input here, which is the number of cities, and queries, which is like new links between them. And then for each of the, the links, we basically want to know how long it takes to get from city zero to whatever n minus one here is. So in this case, it's uh, city four. So however many steps. So in the beginning, uh, they tell us that all the cities are linked. So in this example, we have city one, city uh, two, so zero, one, two, three, four. So this is the, um, the five kind of Query, uh, the five cities that we have, and there's a unidirectional path. And we know that the queries represent um, adding a path here. Uh, so for example, and we wanna do basically the shortest path after you add each query. So basically at, at each addition. So in the beginning, we're gonna add this path from two to four. So we can see that the way to get from zero to four would be, let's see, we would first go from zero to one, that's one step from one to two, and then from two, we can go straight to four. Uh, so that's gonna be three steps in total, right? Cool, so that is that one. <clears throat> then we still have this step, so in the next step, we actually add a path from uh, zero to two. So now what we can do is we can actually take this path from zero to two, and then we from two to four. So that's why it's two, because it takes two steps now. Um, and now for the last one, there is now a direct path from zero to four, which means that on the last time to get from zero to four, it would take one iteration. <clears throat> so pretty straightforward. Um, what we wanna do here is, I mean, we can represent this as a graph. <clears throat> um, and what we wanna do is obviously, uh, we wanna get from point A to point B in a graph in the shortest amount of time possible. Since this is an unweighted graph, uh, we can simply just use BFS. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna perform uh, BFS every time to find the shortest path uh, from our start node, which is always zero to whatever n minus one is. Uh, and we're just gonna traverse the graph. Every time we add an additional query, uh, we'll update the graph with any new kind of uh, edges between two nodes, and then we'll just rerun our BFS. So in total, this is gonna give us a runtime complexity of big O of Q, which is the number of queries, times basically the time it takes to actually run the BFS, so times big O of N, and that's what we wanna do. We're just gonna do Q BFSs, and it's relatively straightforward. You just have to make sure you maintain the graph, um, but that's really all you need to do. So let's go into the code editor and type this up. Let's now code this up. We're gonna do two parts here, one for the main function, and obviously we need our BFS function, which we'll kind of define as a helper. So let's do the main function because it's quite simple. So we're gonna need an answer to store our result, and we're gonna need our result, which is just, uh, sorry, we're gonna need our graph, which is just an adjacency list. So for a given node, all of the nodes that you can reach. So we're gonna say our adjacency list is gonna be empty in the beginning. So we're just gonna store a list for uh, blank in range uh, n, right? So basically we're gonna create an empty list for all of the nodes, and then now we need to actually populate uh, that list. So we're going to say for i in range of n minus 1. And we're going to say that the adjacency list, adjacency list of i, um, we're going to append i plus 1. Uh, because remember, the initially the graph is just from 0 to n minus 1, and there's just a one directional path between them. So 0 should contain a path to 1, 1 should contain a path to 2, and so on and so forth. So this is why we do to n minus 1, we just append i plus 1 here. So now we actually have the graph, and now we actually need to process each of the queries. 
for each query, we're just going to kick off our BFS function and add that to the results. So we're going to say for road in queries, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to basically say uh, we're going to get the kind of the new um, the new edges, right? So this is the you know uh, node U and node V that they give us, and we need to update the graph. Um, so we're going to say adjacency list adjacency list of u dot append v so now there is an edge from u to v uh, and it's one directional not bidirectional um, and then now we're just going to say answer dot append the result of calling our helper bfs function which we'll define in a second um, passing n uh, that's the number of nodes and then also the adjacency list so the adjacency list okay cool so that is the actual uh, function here. Um, oops, yeah. And then all we need to do is just return answer. Actually, this should be ans, not answer. Okay, cool. So that is the actual um, function here. Now we need to define the BFS, and this is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just going to take self n and the adjacency list. Okay, so. Uh, for the DFS, obviously, we don't want to get caught in some sort of infinite cycle in case it happens. So let's actually use a visited set to make sure that, um, you know, we don't waste processing and we don't get caught in an infinite cycle. So we're going to say visited is going to equal to we're just going to say false uh, and we're going to do it n times. So each index is just going to represent how we visited that node uh, at whatever index we are in. And then obviously to do a BFS, typically we use a queue. So we're going to say queue equals collections dot deck and it's just going to be empty in the beginning now what we want to do actually we can just start uh, from zero and we want to mark uh, zero as visited so we're going to mark visited of zero to be true okay so now we just need to perform our bfs so we're going to say while q and we basically want to process all the nodes on the current um, kind of iteration. So we're going to say for blank in range uh, len of Q. So basically, we want to just process all the things that are in our current queue, because uh, that's kind of our current step. And then we'll move on to the next step. So we're just going to process all the ones that are currently in the queue. We're going to say that the current node obviously is going to be um, node. Oh, sorry. And then we need to keep track of the um, the layers that we've explored so far. So explored uh, equals zero, and we're going to do it layer by layer. So, um, so the current node is going to be uh, the Q dot pop left. So we get the current node, and we want to now check whether or not our BFS is complete. So if the current node actually equals to n minus one, we know that we've hit the end because we're trying to go from zero to whatever n minus one is. So we're going to say if the current node actually equals to n minus one, then we simply just return the layers explored. Cool. So that basically will do the BFS for us. And now we need to actually do the hard part of moving through the, the graph. So we're going to say, sorry, for neighbor in adjacency list of the current node. So for all the nodes that we can reach from our current uh, position, we're going to say if we've already visited that neighbor, um, then we don't care about it, right? We're just going to continue. We don't want to process it again. Otherwise, we're going to add that queue, uh, that item to the queue. So we're going to say queue.append uh, that neighbor. And then we also want to update that we've now visited this neighbor. So we're going to say visited of neighbor uh, is just going to equal to true. And then before we kind of um, go on to the next layer of processing in our queue, we just need to say layers explored. Um, or I guess we can maybe we can just call this steps. Uh, we'll just call this steps. Yeah, that's probably a better name. Um, steps, we just want to add one to it. Okay, so at this point, if we don't return steps, then somehow we weren't able to actually get to the end. Maybe there is no road or something happened. Uh, in which case we just simply return minus one. So that is actually um, it. I think if we run this now, uh, has no, oh fuck, did I call it DFS? Yeah, of course. Okay, DF, BFS. Uh, cool, that looks fine. Please accept. Okay, nice. All right, so 
that is how you solve this question. Pretty straightforward, you know, do a graph and luckily we just can, um, you know, apply the BFSs in sequence, uh, nothing too crazy here. So in terms of the time and space complexity, obviously there are Q queries and we're gonna be running the BFS each time. <clears throat> so that means that Q times whatever the BFS is so basically for the BFS, we have to traverse, um, you know, the entirety of our, um, our graph. So in the worst case, it's going to be N, which represents the kind of edges in the graph, right? Uh, plus uh, Q, because we're going to be adding uh, Q queries to them. So the length of the total graph uh, is just going to be N plus Q. So that's the total number of kind of edges we might have to traverse. So this represents the, the graph. Uh, the BFS traversal, and this is the number of queries. So where Q equals num queries, N equals, um, I guess, N. So num, uh, num edges in graph. Uh, for the space complexity, let's see what we have. Obviously, we need to store the adjacency list. So that's going to be big O of N to store all of them, um, plus Q because we're going to be adding uh, Q to it. And then obviously, we have that uh, the same thing for the actual uh, the Q itself inside of the BFS. So, um, but because that happens sequentially, it's not actually, um, we're not recreating it. So it's just going to be big O of N plus Q. Anyway, a uh, cool little problem. Definitely. It's going to be a graph week this week on lead code. And, um, you know, luckily this one wasn't too bad. Um, I'm quite strong with graphs. So hopefully this, this explanation made sense. The code wasn't uh, all that complicated. I think just a standard BFS um, and nothing that really, we really haven't done before on the channel. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, why not leave it a like and a comment, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.